In case you missed it, Idea Channel started a book club. We've read one thing so far, a short story by Argentine magical realist Jorge Luis Borges titled Pierre Menard, author of the Quixote. If you haven't read it yet, there's good news. It's not very long. You could pause right now, give it a read and watch the rest of this video and still have time to make a smoothie for lunch. My favorite recipe is in the doobly-doo. Today, we're gonna talk about Pierre Menard, some of the story's themes and your reactions from the book club thread on the subreddit. But first, we're gonna talk about Borges himself, who was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1899 and began his writing career in his early 20s as a poet and an essayist. Responding largely to surrealism, which though he operated in close proximity to, Borges called snobbish chit-chat, he became curious about the line between art and life, the real and the fictional. La tarea del arte es esa, es transformar, digamos, lo que nos ocurre continuamente, transformar todo eso en símbolos, transformarlo en música, he was influenced by existential and phenomenological philosophy coming out of Europe at the time. In his 20s and 30s, Borges wrote literary criticism, essays, and poetry. He even penned a few literary forgeries, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. He worked as an editor, translator, literary advisor, and library assistant. He had a few works published, but none widely and none translated from the Spanish. In short, he wasn't yet the literary heavyweight that we know him as today. That would all change on Christmas Eve, 1938. Rushing to meet a friend for Christmas Eve dinner, Borges cut his head open on a casement window and needed to be hospitalized. His wound was stitched up quickly, but he got blood poisoning and had to stay at the hospital for several days. He was delusional, hallucinating, unable to sleep, and even occasionally close to death. After recuperating to test his faculties, Borges decided to write something unlike anything he'd penned before, a short story. Speaking with the Paris Review in 1967, he said, I thought I would try my hand at writing an article or a poem, but I thought I've written hundreds of articles and poems. If I can't do it, then I'll know at once that I'm done for, that everything is over with me. So I thought I'd try my hand at something I hadn't done. If I couldn't do it, there'd be nothing strange about it because why should I write short stories? It would prepare me for the final overwhelming blow, knowing that I was at the end of my tether. In truth, Borges had written two other short stories before, but to him, this was different. Giving himself permission to fail at a thing he thought himself incapable, Borges wrote Pierre Menard, author of the Quixote. It was the first short story published under his own name, and it was a hit, changing the course of his career. If it hadn't been for that particular knock on the head I got, he wrote, perhaps I would have never written short stories. Pierre Menard, author of the Quixote, is about a man, Pierre Menard, who rewrites portions of Cervantes' Don Quixote. Sort of. Written as a sort of literary review slash defense, the short is from the point of view of a colleague and admirer of Menard who describes Menard's inspiration, process, and success at not simply copying Don Quixote, but actually writing it word for word as though for the first time. The difficulty in even describing this task and how one could conceivably succeed at it may give you some insight into why Borges thought of this as a test of his faculties. How do you explain the process of an author writing exactly a pre-existing work, but in a way that makes it not only not a copy, but actually better than the original and more original even? Actually, though he did consider it a challenge, Borges wasn't entirely unversed in related and rather complex matters. One of the two first short stories he wrote, for instance, was The Approach to Al-Mutasim. Borges described it as an essay and a hoax. It's a review of a book that doesn't actually exist. And remember those forgeries I mentioned? While working as a critic and translator, Borges purposefully misattributed authorship a couple times and even published some of his own work under the names of the poets and writers that he translated. Before writing Menard, Borges was no stranger to the effect of authorship on a work, how audiences respond to an author and how that author may sit closer to the effective center of literature than we realize. And relatedly, how an author's background can influence what seems to be in a work of art. Menard, though short, is dense, lousy with intertextual references, philosophical deep cuts, and lit history in jokes, which should be no surprise being written by a man who for a decade beforehand wrote endlessly about 
writing. There is way too much in Menard to cover in one video, which is one reason I chose it for the book club, but I'll put some links to a few papers in the doobly-doo if you want to do some digging. We're going to stick to the broad strokes. What Menard asks specifically is how exactly the meaning of Don Quixote, one of the first novels of the Western tradition and arguably the greatest Spanish language novel of all time, changes if readers think of it as having been written by a Frenchman, a symbolist from Nîmes, and not the 17th century Spanish novelist Miguel de Cervantes. In general, in general, what Menard does is to use the meaning an author and their background brings to a work to make the case that reading is itself a kind of writing and even authorship. One big topic of conversation for the book club was whether Menard did it. Did he actually manage to write, not copy, but write, the ninth and 38th chapters of the first section of Don Quixote and a fragment of chapter 22, all of which, it may be worth noting, are about writing in some respect. The narrator says Menard guarded his process and destroyed the in-progress work which proves his claim, but the narrator also says he stands himself as proof of the man's incredible deed. He cites several, let's call them arguable, credentials before defending at length Menard's success and genius. Alexophile on the subreddit describes this as the single point of departure. Is the narrator a rube? Was he swindled or uncritical? Is he repeating a known con for his own gain? Does Menard even exist? Or is he real? Did he successfully produce a few pages which coincided word for word and line for line with those of Cervantes? Book club opinion was split. Father Mocker mounted an impassioned defense that the whole thing is a scam, saying, given that most of the referenced works come from a group of friends, already untrustworthy given their reputation, and that the whole point of the fake article is to publish a thorough list of Menard's writings, given that third party sources list even fewer, couldn't Menard be a late collective creation by a ghostwriter? Cole Driver takes a different angle on the scam read, writing, my initial impression is that the narrator is Menard, and he's writing it ironically. I felt as though I was reading an absolutely scathing indictment of patronage and artistry. Philip Brandon sketches out two possible Menards, the deep-minded and earnest artist who spends long hours toiling over the method acting version of writing, and also the opportunistic attention seeker of no true talent, the same that skeptics accuse many a modern or contemporary artist of being. The Kittier compares him to a skilled counterfeiter, and Demon 5 writes, I didn't bother much at all with considering whether Menard actually recreated the passages independently. It seems to me that our narrator wouldn't care much either way, since his emotions regarding Menard's Quixote seem to stem more from an admiration of the artist himself than his processes. In a way, whether Menard actually did it is sort of beside the point. On one level, if Menard can build a convincing enough fiction around his potentially fictional reconstruction of this important work of fiction, well, then he's done it, hasn't he? The work is what's seen in it by its audience, regardless of the facts, until the potentially non-existent point where those are revealed, CF Milli Vanilli. Girl, you know it's true. But on another level, neither Menard nor the narrator really matter. As Howard Giskin writes, it's not particularly relevant whether Menard could actually do what the story says he does, but rather that the mere positing of the existence of such a text prompts some very interesting speculations about the act of interpretation. This is Menard as a thought experiment. One of the most well-known parts of the short is a comparison between two identical pieces of text about the relationship between truth and history. The Cervantes, the narrator writes, is mere rhetorical praise of history. Menard's version, on the other hand, is astounding. Menard, a contemporary of William James, our narrator writes, does not define history as an inquiry into reality, but as its origin. Historical truth for him is not what has happened, it is what we judge to have happened. Unable, or maybe just unwilling to separate the author from the work, the narrator sees two textually identical pieces as fundamentally different, and even sees within the second an inkling of permission for his ahistorical interpretations of the text. The author's moment becomes part of the text, inextricable from the way it can, and in this case arguably should, be read. We should be careful, though, to not hastily intone Bart here, who would say that the author doesn't know and can't authoritatively speak to their influences. Menard et al. aren't trying to resurrect the deceased author to give them a place of 
authorial authority. Quite the contrary, they bury the author six feet deeper by going further outside the story to speculative influences on speculative authors, attempting to see the unspoken inspirations not of its original creator, but another entirely. This is a fundamentally creative act of readership. And insofar as there is even a shade of this process, where we consider the time and context of a work's creation, not the author's intention, but their environment, insofar as we do this when we read any book, Pierre Menard, author of The Quixote, makes a case that any act of readership is fundamentally creative, that in a way, reading is a kind of writing. By extension, it even sort of argues that such is the case for plagiarism. Interestingly, as Delia Ungurinu, the pronunciation of whose last name, along with everything that's about to happen in this paragraph, I would like to apologize for, uh, as she points out in her paper Pierre Menard the Surrealist, the same month Pierre Menard, author of the Quixote, was published in the Argentine literary magazine Sur, the actual Pierre Menard published an Analyse de la Écriture de l'Autrement in the Surrealist magazine Minotaur. Actual Menard's paper concerns the work of Comte de Lautremont, a Uruguayan-born French poet. One of Lautremont's two finished works, Poesis, was heavily plagiarized. In his defense, Lautremont wrote, plagiarism is necessary. It is implied in the idea of progress. It clasps the author's sentence tight, uses his expressions, eliminates a false idea, replaces it with the right idea. So did Borges, in a way, plagiarize Menard's defense of plagiarizing Cervantes in the name of progress? The speculation surrounding actual Menard and Borges' Menard is fascinating, but too much for right now. And Gurinu's paper is a thrilling piece of comparative lit. Read it if you can. So instead of concluding by wrapping a tidy bow around the dueling Menards, we'll finish with a related point made by Forma's content on the subreddit, who writes, if we think of modernism as narrator as author and postmodernism as reader as author, this particular text comes as one happy pretzel. In a way, this story is a protest against postmodernism, giving the author the most authority. But at the same time, Menard rejects modernism as too simple, so perhaps it's meant to ridicule the idea that the author is the only authority. Borges is, in fact, often described as a link between genres, forms, and movements. David Foster Wallace, in a blurb on the back of my very copy of Labyrinths, writes, the truth, briefly stated, is that Borges is arguably the great bridge between modernism and postmodernism in world literature. The work which does most of that bridging is found mostly in his short stories, and Menard was the first avowed and paradigmatic Borgesian short story. Am I saying, then, that Pierre Menard, author of The Quixote, is the bridge from modernism to postmodernism in world literature? Some single site of progress. Not necessarily, but given the context, the history, and the author's background, I think it's safe to say it can be read that way. La tarea del arte es esa, es transformar, digamos, lo que nos ocurre continuamente, transformar todo eso en símbolos, transformarlo en música, transformarlo en algo que puede perdurar en la memoria de los hombres, y es nuestro deber eso, tenemos que cumplir con él, si no nos sentimos muy desdichados. There will be no comment response for this video, but I would encourage you to get involved in the book club discussion on the subreddit. I'll put a link to the thread in the doobly-doo. It's super great. It's a great read. Even if you don't want to post anything, there are so many good thoughts and interpretations. It's, yeah, it's great. You guys are very smart and awesome. And also, on the Friday of the week that this is posted, I'm going to make a post on the Idea Channel subreddit about the next thing that we are going to read, which is almost certainly going to be another Borges short story. In this week's comment response, we talk about your thoughts regarding the consumption versus the encoding and decoding of media. If you want to watch that one, you can click here or find a link in the doobly-doo. Also, tomorrow, uh, on Friday in the afternoon Eastern Time, I'm going to make a post on the Idea Channel subreddit about the next thing that we are going to be reading for the book club. It's going to be another Borges short story, so keep an eye out for that. We have a Facebook, an IRC, and a subreddit. Links to those also in the doobly-doo. And this week's Tweet of the Week comes from 1212 the Doctor, who points us towards a story about a chatbot AI that developed depression, which is interesting given the sort of the thing that happened with Tay, if you guys remember Tay, the Microsoft AI, uh, and whether or not it can be said that an AI 
has depression or just, you know, like in the way a, a sad puppy isn't sad, but it's expressive of sadness. Anyways, this is, uh, the, the article's a really short read, doesn't really get deep in the in the weeds, but it's a, an interesting, some interesting food for thought. And last but certainly not least, this week's episode would not have been possible or good without the very hard work of these authors of the Idea Channel.